Hi, I'm Nick Driftwood, UK filmmaker and Panasonic Lumix ambassador. Hi, I'm John McGregor. I'm a product trainer with Sennheiser. So we're going to uh, go through a few uh, scenarios now and uh, the application of different kinds of microphones. First one is uh, interviews. And um, I've got a microphone on top, it's a shotgun microphone, the MS2 on top of the camera. John? Yeah, um, one of the simplest ways to do it, especially if you're a single camera uh, operator, is to have a, a shot, shotgun built into the camera. Uh, it's nice and simple um, because as you're following the action with the camera, the, the, the microphone's following the action too. Um, you do have to be aware of a few things. Um, most of the shotguns that go on top of cameras, the smaller shotguns, uh, don't necessarily give you the same distance as, say, a, a full, uh, more professional shotgun. Um, Beyond using shotguns, obviously, we can then also look at uh, using handheld microphones. So I've got an omnidirectional handheld microphone here. Handhelds, we're, we're really used to seeing, you know, most interviews you'll see someone using a, a handheld microphone. I've chosen a, a, an omnidirectional for this one just to talk about it because when we start using handhelds, we've got to be aware of microphone technique. So with an omni, because it picks up sound in a 360 degree sphere around the microphone, I don't have to worry about um, how to use it. I can hold the microphone here. You and I can have a question and answer session and the microphone will pick it up. Yeah, a classic sort of music video scenario. Yeah. You control it as the interviewer. But However, if I'm on my own though, John, as the cameraman uh, and looking after sound, you're pretty much locked into one of these, aren't you, really? Because Yeah, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be sticking to to a shotgun because then you don't necessarily have to have the worry of having a cable going down and, and so on and so forth. And you know, the interviewee may not be comfortable holding a microphone uh, and they can do a lot of problems with microphones if they don't know how to use them properly. So yeah, a shotgun's a great way to go. And the value mics as well. Uh, you know, we're in a studio situation, a bit more time to set up. Uh, and record an interview so you can close mic them. Yeah, and because of that close miking, you'll get a more direct sound from the microphone as well, so less ambience and more of that sound you're trying to record, so they can be uh, really, really useful to work with in an interview situation. So moving swiftly on, now let's think about you know the documentary. Um, you know, Often in documentary scenarios, you're in uh, an exterior, you're outside in the daytime, you're following your uh, interviewer about, maybe, or you can get them in a fixed location. Um, and then, of course, you've got the interior studio documentary style interview as well, where you set them up left or right or whatever. Um, are we talking very similar sort of setup to that previous one? Yeah, we are. I mean, the shotgun is obviously the, is primarily the way to go with that because, once again, it gives you the freedom of either having the shotgun on the camera or at least a boom held on, but obviously you're going to need another person to hold the boom. Um, but, you know, with the shotgun, you're able to get that distance away. The performers that you're, you're videoing don't necessarily have to have a microphone on them uh, and the drawbacks that, that brings. Um, and, yeah, you'll get a great sound from your shotgun for situations like that. Great. And that brings me on to like walking about sort of style interviews. You know, say uh, you're at an exhibition, you're interviewing someone, you're following them around the event. Um, would you boom pole that or would you, I mean, you know, what would you recommend? Because we're having to move all the time or would you lap them up? For, for a situation like that, it's going to be, it's going to come down to a choice of, of what you're comfortable working with and what the, the performer's comfortable working with. I would always suggest go for a lav because it makes life easier. However, some people are comfortable with a handheld. They like to have that thing in their hand. Mm -hmm. um, so then again, you could go for a wireless handheld microphone and they can work with that. But I, I, I like the idea of a Lavalli in that it just makes things a little bit simpler and easier to work with. However, if that person was then to maybe do a quick interview with someone themselves, you'll need the handheld. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, going back to the noise problems, uh, certainly at events, you can get quite a lot of uh, crossover noise from a you, whole array of different You can, uh, but then that comes down to choosing the right polar pattern for your microphone. You know, a Lavalier is primarily going to be an omnidirectional microphone, but we do also have you know, directional handheld microphones. Uh, and with the right choice, something like a supercardioid microphone, uh, you, can, you can use that uh, rejection plane to make sure that you're not picking up the sound that's going on around you. That's great. And we're going to look at uh, like, uh, the microphone patterns in a later video. ENG, electronic news gathering. You know, uh, often a cameraman, in two scenarios, you look at the news, for example, um, uh, there's always a, a microphone on top of the camera, or there's a presenter uh, with a microphone. Mm. Again, you, you probably already uh, told us about what type of choices, but what would you apply to that? Primarily, yeah. primarily for ENG, it's mm. going to be a handheld. Really, to be honest, because obviously there's the higher potential for needing to ask interviews. Um, and once again, going back to what we said earlier, depending on the uh, the knowledge of the interviewer 
uh, you would choose either an omnidirectional microphone for that ability just to leave the microphone here, or you could go directional. But with directional microphones, so this is a cardioid microphone, you're going to have to remember that, you know, as I'm asking the question, the interviewee has to wait until I push the microphone over. Because should the interviewee start talking as I've got the microphone here, the microphone is not going to pick them up. The microphone picks up in this direction. Omni picks up all the way around, but a cardio only picks up here. So you'd have to literally wait and go, hang on a second, I'm going to ask my question and then hand it over to you. So da 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 and then da 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 OK, we're back in the studio, yep. John. Um, and I'm doing a bit of voiceover. Yeah. Microphone. What we're going to use with our mixing desk? You are going to use a big studio condenser microphone if you can get your hands on it. Um, but realistically, it would be any vocal microphone. So a handheld vocal microphone is absolutely fine. Uh, you would, however, want to put it on a stand so you can reduce, once again, the handling noise that we get from holding a microphone. But realistically, when you're in a studio, uh, in the post environment, when you're doing voiceovers, you're going to want to try and get hold of a big studio recording condenser microphone because it will give you the best sound quality. Uh, and you could also use a little, couple of little tricks. Uh, depending on the directionality of the microphone, the closer you get to it, you get an, a natural bass boost. So if you get really nice and close and intimate to the microphone, you can get a nice bass boost, get that God voice going on. And to stop sibilance and uh, other kind of uh, sound artifacts, yeah. what, a pop sock or a cover a, or some a, kind a pop, of screen? A pop shield would be a good idea, whether it's, whether it's one of those foam socks that goes over the top or a proper uh, pop shield. Uh, there are a few other little tricks you can use, pencils, uh, pencils, um, sticky taped or uh, elastic banded to the microphone and so on do help with that. But realistically, you're going to go for a pop shield of some sort. Okay, John, thanks for that. I'm um, now going to ask you briefly about narrative filmmaking because there's going to be a whole array of different mics to use. Yeah, there is. Um, you're, going to have to use a, you're going to have to use a, a couple of choices of this. You're going to have a, a shotgun or a couple of shotguns pointing at the performers on stage. Um, you could then also potentially have Lavalier microphones on the performers. Depending on what you're filming, it can be interesting because hiding them, they can sometimes be quite visible. Uh, Lavaliers, thankfully, are quite small, and we do see in theatre world that you do hide the Lavalier up in the hairline. But also because of their size, you can hide them on set. You can put them in plant pots and things like that. So yeah, it's it's going down the sort of the, the lav wireless route combined with a couple of shotguns to to give you an overall um, hmm. sound field that you can work with. And a good old boom pole. And a wonderful poor gentleman or lady holding a boom pole <laughs> for hours on end. Okay, so what about sound effects and picking up uh, natural ambience of the scene that you're filming? Yeah, so when we're working with when we're working with ambience and sound effects, it's going to be two types of microphones or two polar patterns really. Uh, if you're looking at ambience, you may want to choose an omnidirectional microphone that picks up the entire ambience, what's going on. Uh, and that's great just for picking up the general sound. When you're looking at doing specific spot sounds, then you're going to want to have a shotgun. Course. The shotgun's highly directional, it's going to reject a lot of the ambient noise that's coming from the sides, uh, and because it's very, very focused on what's in front of it, you're going to get a great sound just from, from what you're trying to pick up. So this is a quick guide to the type of choices of microphones that you might be using with the Lumix video-enabled cameras. Panasonic.